Would you be Dan Becker's lover for one week for one million subscribers? Ah, <laughs> oh, dude. What's up everybody? It's been a couple months since I've done a Q&A video, so that's what we're gonna do here today. First of all, real quick, I need to say a huge thank you to all of my subscribers and, and supporters who donated to my 46 Climbs team because holy shit, I need to open a beer for this. We are currently the number one fundraising team my team has raised over $10,000 and I say it like it's my team. It's not really even my team. It's your team. It's, it's everybody's team because I really haven't raised that much. It's other people that have absolutely stepped up and freaking killed it. So I need to say thank you. Like I'm going to freaking drink one to that. Got to rep that Vermont beer. I know some douchebag in the comments is going to make fun of my pour too. That's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. Cheers. $10,000, the number one team. That's amazing. I have the best subscribers on YouTube, way better than Dan Becker's subscribers. And with that said, let's do a Q&A video. As is normal with these videos that I do, some of these, about half of them are actually related to hiking and backpacking, and the other half are just nonsense. Like this one, for instance. What are your thoughts on castration as a pro ultralight technique? Although in your case, I'm sure you'll be okay with the extra ounce. Funny. <laughs> what other hobbies do you have outside of hiking slash backpacking? Well, obviously I'm a hiking nerd, so this is what I do with most of my free time when I'm not working, but other than hiking and backpacking, I really like punk slash pop punk slash hardcore slash emo music, so I spend a lot of time listening to that. I play a little bit of guitar, but I kind of suck. And I also really like hockey. I'm a huge Boston Bruins fan, as a lot of you know, but not this year because this NHL season and especially the playoffs is a complete joke. I also like politics a lot too, but we're not gonna get into that. Would you be Dan Becker's lover for <laughs> Would you be Dan Becker's lover for one week for one million subscribers? Ah, <laughs> oh, dude. I'd probably, I'd probably do it, let's be honest. <laughs> How do you store your gear when you're home? I wish I had like a really fancy gear closet or like a really good like gear setup for storage, but I honestly don't. I literally just throw it all like in the corner in a bin, which is right there. On a backpacking trip, who is the bigger complainer on trail, you or Flossie? Who gets more attention from the ladies? <laughs> I think I probably complain more, but I feel like my complaining is usually like kind of a joke. I feel like it's pretty rare that I legitimately complain about things. So I think Flossie probably complains more, like actual complaining more than I do, but uh, neither one of us really complain that much and that's why we like to hike together, I think. And as far as the ladies go, well, Flossie's definitely more attractive than me, but I'm like a couple inches taller than him, so I think it's kind of a toss up. Have you ever hiked barefoot or do you know anyone who does? I've never done it. I don't really know anyone who does it. Um, I did pass two people on my Appalachian Trail through hike that were hiking barefoot. And funny enough, they were both in the same day as well. And it was a complete show of a day. It was pouring rain and uh, they both looked absolutely miserable. What is your luxury item? I actually had to think about this one for a little bit. And then I realized that it's actually really obvious what my luxury item is. That would be my camera, obviously, because I carry like almost four pounds worth of camera. It's like 3.6 pounds. I've measured it out the other day. Money aside, what would be your dream big four? That is a good question. I think my backpack would be a Mountain Laurel Designs Profit, which I actually have in the mail right now, or it's not in the mail yet. I ordered it like a couple months ago and it still hasn't showed up. It's past the normal lead time now. I don't know what the hell's going on there, but I'm excited to get that backpack. And then sleeping pad, probably just the one I have right now, the uh, Neo Air x -Lite, I think it is, Thermarest, um, cause that's been pretty good and it's pretty lightweight, pretty warm as well. I think it's got a good mix there. And then for a quilt, I don't really know. I feel like the one I have now, the Hammock Gear Econ, is pretty good. I could definitely get a slightly lighter one. So I guess if money wasn't an issue, I'd probably do that, but I, I do like the one I have. And then as far as a tent, I'm probably gonna go with a duplex, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm still thinking about what I'm gonna buy, hopefully pretty soon. Why won't you hike with me, damn it? <laughs> because I don't know who you are. I'm not gonna hike with you if I don't know who you are. How does it feel to have a superior channel to Dan and what are you going to do when you surpass his subscription number? I don't know if I'll pass his subscription number. I do definitely have a superior channel and it feels good. I climbed the Southern Presidential Peaks for Team Kyle this weekend, 46 climbs. Thank you very much. What has been your hardest hike slash trip to date? I'll say the Devil's Path hike that I did a few weeks ago with Syntax 77 and Flossie was definitely the hardest hike I've done this year. And then, I don't know, the Appalachian Trail, like, 
It took four and a half months, so that was pretty difficult. This is a really good question for anybody who's thinking about through hiking. Did you buy soap slash shampoo in towns when you took showers? So this is something you might not think about if you're not through hiking, or you might not think about until you're through hiking and you find yourself in a hotel that doesn't have soap or shampoo and you're like, Shit, what do I do? Most of the time, the places you stay are going to have it. So I just used a hotel as an example, but most hotels are gonna have like the little shampoo soap things. In my experience, that's the case for hostels as well, although it's not quite as reliable as hotels, but most of the time you don't have to worry about it or you can always just buy a cheap bottle from the grocery store if you have to. Thoughts on hiking with camp chairs? Burn them. <laughs> Burn that shit, dude. Did you ever feel like mailing it in on your through hike of the long trail? And I think what Michael means there is, did I ever feel like quitting? No, absolutely not. I love that trail. I got lucky with good weather. I was lucky with good health as well. So I didn't have a reason to quit. In fact, I remember when I finished it, I hiked it in 2016, by the way. When I finished it, I told the guy I was hiking with that I would have kept going if I could have, but unfortunately the trail ends at the border with Canada, so I wasn't trying to get arrested by the border patrol. What's the best way to get into backpacking when going to college? Hop on Tinder, match with a cute girl, and take her backpacking. <laughs> Any idea how many miles you have traveled with that ULA pack? Thousands. I mean, I did the whole AT with it. I did the long trail with it. I did a failed attempt at the Northville Placid Trail with it, and I even take it on day hikes sometimes, so my guess is close to 3,000, probably just under 3,000 miles, which is really awesome. I love that pack, and if my Mountain Laurel Designs pack doesn't get here soon, kinda wanna just say screw it, cancel that, and then just buy another one of those, because my ULA CDT is awesome. What was your experience doing the AT in a hammock? Could you always find a place to hang, or were parts of the trail difficult? I never had any trouble at all. If you bring a hammock on the AT, you're not gonna have any problems. What is your dream through hike? And Baskets asked that question, and he probably has hiked just about every trail at this point. That guy's a real badass, so I don't know, the PC like I want to do the PCT, but freaking the West Coast is on fire right now. So I don't know when that's ever gonna happen. Thoughts on using an umbrella while backpacking? I feel like that's a West Coast thing. So I've never used one. I feel like when you're in the desert and you need some like shade or whatever, that's when people use them. So I don't know if they work well or not. I'm not the person to ask that question to. I will say they look goofy as f though, that's for sure. Curious about your filming, camera setup, lenses, and editing software. So. I've switched up a little bit since I started this channel, but right now I'm shooting on a Canon EOS R, which is a very expensive mirrorless full frame camera. For my lens, I literally ripped off Darwin on the Trails exact setup. I have a Canon EF 24 millimeter 2.8. I'm literally reading it off the lens right now. For my microphone, I just bought a Rode Video Micro. I think that's what it's called. And before that, I was just using like an Amazon ripoff of that exact same mic. When I'm hiking, I keep the camera attached to my shoulder strap on my backpack using the Peak Design capture clip. And then as far as my editing software goes, I really like open source free software. I try to cut costs as much as I possibly can. So I use a free editing software called HitFilm Express. And for photo editing, for my stupid Photoshops and for the thumbnails and stuff, I use GIMP, which is an open source ripoff of Photoshop. Basically, it's almost identical. I used Photoshop a lot when I was in college and for my purposes, GIMP is totally fine. Snowboard or ski? Do you mountain, mountain bike at all? I do ski. I just bought a pass like two days ago. I'm really excited about that. I don't snowboard and I tried mountain biking a couple times when I was a kid. I remember one time I went over the handlebars like three times or two times, something like that, within the course of like 30 minutes. And ever since then I was like, I'm gonna fucking kill myself if I keep doing this. Is there a piece of gear that surprised you and punched above its weight or price in increasing your quality of life on trail? That's a good question. I was thinking about this one a little bit before I started recording. I think I'm gonna go with two different items. The first one is my BRS stove, which it's just one of the cheapo Amazon ones you've probably seen before in other videos, but it's really, really small, really, really lightweight. I think it weighs like an ounce, maybe I wanna say. When I first bought it, I was a little bit skeptical because it's so small. I thought it might be kind of unsturdy, like my pot might be unsturdy on it, but it works really, really well and it's just so light. So and it, was, it was only like 15 bucks, I wanna say too. So really, really cheap. So I really like that piece of gear. The other one I'm gonna say is my headlamp, again, pretty common piece of gear that you've probably heard of by now, but it's the Nightcore NU25 headlamp. Super, super lightweight, and it's really, really bright. It recharges really fast, um, and it was like 35 bucks, so 
Really dig that as well. Do you like potato? <laughs> yep. Worst night sleep story on the trail. So this happened when I was probably 16. It was one of my very first backpacking trips ever with my friend Dan. And we went out in early November, which was a terrible idea. There was no snow on the ground when we left our houses, but by the time we got up to Jay Pass on the long trail, which is where we started hiking from, there was snow on the ground. And we didn't know any better at the time. My mom, God bless her, who dropped us off, she didn't know any better either, obviously, because she's not a hiker. So we set off. I was wearing cotton pants. I had a 30 degree sleeping bag. And that night it got way colder than 30 degrees. It was probably like 15 to 18 degrees, something like that. I don't remember exactly, but it was freaking cold. I was soaked because the snow got in my cotton pants and my other clothes and I was wet. Me and Dan basically laid there for the entire night shivering, did not sleep at all and it was a complete show. And I've never backpacked in temperatures that cold ever since because I think I'm a little bit scarred from it. So that sucked, that was terrible. And that's how we're gonna end the video today. So smash subscribe, follow me on Instagram and fuck off.